I'm Peter Dickinson. I've uh, chaired the Urban Design Panel for some time. Um, one of the things I've been trying to do is to uh, instill a better understanding amongst practitioners and uh, highway engineers, traffic managers, about the importance of place. And so that's a theme that uh, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll hear a little bit about as I go through this. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Manly for Streets. Uh, I'm sure it's, uh, it's on your reading list or it's on your bedside table for most of you involved with this sort of thing. I'm going to talk a little bit about Design Guide for Place, a recently published document, um, and then something about the CIHT's approach to dealing with all of this stuff, and that's where I'd be really interested in your contributions. Um, Manual for Streets uh, was first published back in 2006, 2007. There were, there were two volumes of it. The, the, uh, the first volume was a DFT publication. The second volume, Manual for Streets 2, was a CIHT publication. Um, and, and those two documents built on pre-existing guidance. Um, they were of their time, um, but they started to introduce this concept of of place and the importance of place uh, as far as the, uh, street design was concerned. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, the documents met with mixed support from practitioners um, and I'll come on to that a little bit later on. Um, we've found out recently that some practitioners are still using really ancient guidance. Design Bulletin 32 seems still to sit on many people's desks, um, whereas Manual for Streets 1 and 2 um, uh, perhaps haven't had quite the degree of support that they, that they deserve. Uh, Manual for Streets itself was all about the design of new streets, mainly residential streets. Uh, Manual for Streets 2 was all about the application of those principles, including those relating to place, um, on existing streets and uh, mixed-use streets. Um, I think it's fair to say, however, that after a period of 10 or 12 years, that it's generally accepted that both documents needed a refresh, um, and that's what we have been involved in doing, along with the DFT, um, the Cabinet Office Policy Lab, um, the, uh, and uh, the Ministry Housing, MHCLG, Minister of Housing, Communities and Local Government. Uh, so the refresh that we're talking about um, relates to the work that we've been doing with those people and the Policy Lab from the Cabinet Office uh, have done a lot of work for us. Um, we've had a number of events including a couple of stakeholder events, this is one of them, and what we tried to do at the, at the stakeholder events was understand why people weren't using these documents, if indeed they weren't. Uh, for those who were using it, using them, what was wrong with them? So in other words, what did they need? What sort of adaptation? What, what updating did they need? Uh, what was missing from them? Um, and that was quite a wide-ranging topic. Uh, and what is required for us to do in terms of a refresh? Um, these stakeholder events were really, really useful and the Policy Lab, at the end of their uh, analysis, they produced a, quite a comprehensive report with a whole series of recommendations. That report went to the Department for Transport um, some three or four months ago. Um, on the basis of that report, the CIHT has um, submitted a proposal to the Department for Transport and the plan is that, uh, assuming that the DFT accept that uh, proposal, uh, we will seek to facilitate the preparation of a refresh of Manual for Streets. Uh, we keep calling it a Manual for Streets refresh. Some people are calling it Manual for Streets 3, which is pretty unimaginative. What it will be called, I don't know, but that's what it is going to be. Um, of course, we're in a period of some turmoil at the moment. Um, the EFT uh, doesn't have ministerial support at the moment. Uh, clearly, uh, things are in a state of flux. But I think the general message that we're getting informally is that this is a project that is worthy, uh, it's necessary, we've done a lot of work to decide what it should consist of, and we're very hopeful that it will proceed uh, within the very short time scale. But of course there's a lot going on, including the publication by, um, by the Ministry of their National Design Guide. And this is a publication that was... Uh, launched back in, oh, just early this, early last month, 1st of October. 
and it contains a number of, uh, of components. You'll see the wheel on the right-hand side, difficult to read, but the wheel on the right-hand side is all about what constitutes a well-designed place. This document is, uh, is, is, is focused on, on planning, so uh, only one component of this document relates to movement. Um, and this is the page that relates to movement. You can look it up on the website, uh, it's on the uh, MHCLG website. Um, and it talks about uh, the characteristics of a well-designed place. It talks about uh, how, it's in, how that, that, that wheel, those characteristics, are integrated into the National Planning Guidance. And because MHCLG have been involved with the work I was alluding to earlier on that's being carried out by the Policy Lab, there is every hope that there's going to be a de significant degree of consistency between the MHCLG planning orientated guidance in so far as it relates to movement and uh, the refresh of manuals to streets that will come out of the Cabinet Office Policy Lab's report and our involvement. Um, this is, a, I hope there's no planners in the audience, this is a planning document so it's full of lots of fine words and I'm rather hopeful that when those fine words are distilled down into some pragmatic guidance that, um, that, that Manual for Streets will give everybody who needs it that pragmatic guidance. Um, but as I say, the, 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 the linkage between MHCLG and the DFT and ourselves is crucial in producing a document that I think will attract a great deal of attention. But when I said there's a lot going on, there is a lot going on. This is a report that the uh, CIHT published uh, last year, Creating Better Streets. This is all about how do we make our streets and our places more inclusive. Uh, you, many of you who were involved with, uh, with urban highway uh, schemes and, and maintenance and management will know that inclusion and accessibility is a really big issue. This is a report that we put together, as I say, um, 12 months or so, 18 months or so ago. It contained, I think, 15 recommendations, um, all of which were uh, linked into place, accessibility and the use by people of urban spaces. Uh, those 15 recommendations, uh, we, we are confident, will lead to their acknowledgement and their inclusion within a new manual for streets. And so you'll see that what we're trying to do is to pull all of these various strands together in a way that will give you, the practitioners, a better basis upon which to, um, to, to do your jobs. Um, this, uh, in doing this report, we struggled a bit to work out how to how to look at the issues involved in, in place and street design. And although it's difficult to read, this is uh, at, on the left hand side a table of objectives which we felt designers ought to be using in preparing, designing, managing and maintaining the urban network. Uh, inclusion, ease of movement, safety, public health, quality of place which I've been talking about and economic benefits. And we said in our report that these criteria should be used as a basis for all street design street uh, management, street adaptation. Um, and coincidentally, there was a lot of work being done in Scotland at the same time. Um, and uh, the work that was being in, done in Scotland produced a similar set of recommendations. Um, and because nobody wants to reinvent the wheel, we decided that, <laughs> looks like we've got some more audience here. <laughs> we just, uh, it was agreed between the Department for Transport and Transport Scotland that the two strands of research picking up our recommendations out of this report and the Scottish work would be, uh, would be amalgamated into one piece of research. That research is ongoing at the moment. Um, it's being steered jointly by DFT and by Transport Scotland. Uh, phase one, I think, has just been reported upon and my understanding is that the whole report will be finished, whether it's published I don't know, but it will be available to those of us who are involved, uh, hopefully early next year. So we've got, we've got the, 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 the Manual for Streets refresh, we've got the work that was, that's been done by the Policy Lab, we've got the recently published uh, uh, um, information from the uh, Ministry's National Planning Design Guide, we've got our own Better Streets report and its recommendations, we've got the research that underpins all that hopefully will underpin the, the, the refresh. So what we're trying to do is to pull the whole thing together and I can tell you that's, that's, that, that's proven to be quite a challenge. But we'll do it. Now, one of, the, one of the things I'm interested to hear from you is about how do we measure all this stuff? Well, we were, the engineers amongst us are used to measuring things. You know, we like tables, we like numbers. I used to use a slide rule, many of you may 
have seen those in museums. What we're talking about here is place, which is really in, an intangible concept in many ways and, and, and diff means different things to different people. So what we've been trying to do recently is to look at um, some mechanism by means of which we can give practitioners an idea of what place actually means in the context of design. Um, and this is another wheel. Uh, it isn't the same wheel as the one I've showed you already. It's another wheel, but it's, it drills down. In the, the, the first wheel that came out of the ministry's guidance had movement as just one spoke, if you follow me. This is, a, uh, this is about place, uh, which is another spoke. And these are the sort of criteria uh, set out in a Venn diagram, which we think could form the basis upon which designers could approach this really difficult issue of, of assessment of quality of place. Um, and round the ring, you've got all the criteria that we think actually contribute towards place and a measurement of how successful or otherwise, in this case, the existing space is and what needed, needs to be done in order to adapt that space and improve it in the context of place. Um, there was a, uh, there's been some publications in the Institutions magazine about this. Uh, there's an event in London on the 4th of December where we're hoping to drill down a little more into what people think about what these criteria might be, how they might be measured, and uh, if you're interested in contributing to that, uh, there's a web link on there where you can get involved and if you're in London on the 4th of December and you want to hear me speaking again then you're very welcome to join us. Um, it's a big subject, it'll end up with a new refresh of Manual for Streets, it'll incorporate all of that stuff, it'll have linkages into other stuff and we're hopeful, in fact I'm very hopeful that it'll provide a document by means of which you guys can do your jobs a whole lot better.